Da. It's here. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name's Frank and it's finally here. Well, it's actually been here for a little bit, but now I can talk about it. This is the Elugu Centauri 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 Centauri. This is the Elugu CC. I am so not confident in the way I say that. I've been waiting to talk about this printer ever since I got it, ever since I've seen it. I've kind of wanted it this whole time. And this is going to be a first look at this machine and how it's been performing for me lately. Um, quick couple caveats to that though. This is not a full dedicated review video. I don't have enough hours on this printer um, to really give my full absolute opinion on it. Elugu did send them out. I'd say a little bit later than we wanted. Um, they aren't on sale yet. We still don't even know the price, but it's going to be under $500. And I am doing this video here on this table because I don't have my normal wobbly folding table or anywhere else because I'm in the process of moving. So we're gonna do everything right here. But I don't think anybody's gonna be upset over that. And if you are, you're weird. It's the, the printer, it's, I can still talk about it, deal with it. So real quick, let's just go over what this printer is and the specs and the things you guys want to know about. We'll talk about what it is. We'll talk about how it's been doing. We'll look at the prints and then we'll probably wrap it up with the things I don't like. However, I do need to say that this video is sponsored by Elegoo. They did send me this printer to start testing out and reviewing and kind of taking a look at. But as you guys know, if you've been following me, um, that's not gonna stop me from saying some negative things. Looking at you, Orange Storm Giga. The bed is 256 cubed, which means 256 by 256 by 256. And if you're curious on what that build size looks like, I got gotcha. you. I printed a giant cube. I, sh I should have just done this on all my other printers. Could you imagine this on the Orange Storm? Um, yeah, I just max sized a uh, calibration cube and it came out really good actually. Um, and unlike some other printers that are 256 cubed, you can actually print 256. There's no exclusion area that limits you to, I don't know why you would really want to do this, but you can do it. The hot end goes to 320 Celsius. The bed goes to 110 Celsius. The hot end is a hardened steel nozzle and it's actually pretty easy to swap, easier than other similar printers. It can do up to 500 millimeters a second. Again, that's in a perfect environment with the perfect settings and the right model. You, because of the speed, it is a well-built frame. It has rubber feet. It's not gonna vibrate off the table. It's built to go those speeds. It does have a little camera up in the corner with a light, an abysmal light. Please, Elugu, work on that. But it is not an AI monitoring camera. It is just there to monitor the prints remotely and or record time lapses. And the time lapses actually are pretty good. Um, if you compare them to like the P1P or P1S's camera from Bamboo, um, this is like a step above that, but not quite as good as like the X1 Carbon. So not bad. Like I said, there's a little light in there and it's, it's not great. But it is a fully enclosed printer with a little poop shoot at the back for, you know, purging your little prints. And uh, I don't know if it'll come off. It comes with a cool little print. Here, let me turn off autofocus so you can see this or turn on autofocus, it's a little Centauri Carbon and it's a poop shoot and it goes right onto the back. This is cute. Um, I got all the poop from all the prints I've done so far. Like I said, I haven't done many, but I've been throwing some prints at it and we'll take a look at that later. But this is on the uh, on the printer. So print it and just attach it to the back. It's really cute. Oh, it, it is the printer. Hold on, hold on. You guys know what I'm doing right there. This is how I should open the video. Like, oh, it's the carbon. You guys get it. If you've used any of the new Bamboos or Creality printers or really any modern printers, the user interfaces have gotten so much better. Um, this is a very, very nice and simple layout. You can turn everything on. You can see the temperatures. You can turn the fans on. Uh, it, it's very, very easy to follow. It looks a lot like the X1C's user interface. Not complaining about it. It's easy. As of releasing this video, I still don't know the price of this thing. Elegoo has teased heavily. It's going to be sub $500, which for what I've been getting off of this printer is really good. I hope it stays to that. I heard rumors of like 400 or sub 400, but I cannot confirm really where those came from. Um, even 500, I still think would be awesome for this printer. 400 would be ridiculous. Anything lower than that, I don't, I don't think so. A printer like this in today's day and age comes with all the standards you guys would expect. Power loss recovery, it has a little filament runout sensor on the side. It does hook up to Wi-Fi. It does auto update itself, which is great. I actually updated it when I literally, I, I was behind one update, moved it from one room, put it on the desk, plugged it in, and there was an update ready. So it is completely up to date, has build plate options, time zone, export logs. It just has all the, all the basic stuff. It's, it's 
It's pretty obvious. I do personally really like that the spool holder is on the side of the printer, so I can change it without having to do this weird, awkward hug thing to reach around the back and, no. Like, this is easy, it sits right here, super awesome. Um, Uncle Jesse pointed this out in his video, which was really funny, but uh, if you pull on, Sorry if the focus went weird there for a second. Anyway, um, I do like that the spool holder is on the side, but like Uncle Jesse pointed out in his video, um, if you pull on it, it pulls the aluminum frame that's around the, the, the structure. I don't think this is a bad thing, but it definitely makes it feel a little cheap, but it is a cheap printer, so I, I guess that's fine. Now, the cons, and I found a couple, but I, I don't, at this point, do not think they are deal breakers by any means. First off, I already mentioned that the light on the camera sucks, but that actually doesn't inhibit the um, the time lapse and the camera functionality. It does a really good job, especially when the door's closed. It's dark in there, so that little bit of light is receptive, or the camera is receptive to the amount of light that is in there, and that works just fine, but it would be nicer if it was just a little bit brighter. With that said, exporting the videos for the time lapse, there's no way to do it on the slicer. And we'll take a quick peek at Elugu's slicer, which they, they just cloned Orca, which I am not mad about either because it works, but there's no way right now to go into Orca Slice or oops, Elegu Slicer, the new version, and export the video. But you can't do it. You do it on the USB stick, which is nicely placed on the front, which again, I, I like. It's just simple. It's right there. Um, so you have to export it, but I downloaded five pages of videos onto it and it took quite a while to export. So being able to grab it right for the computer, hopefully in a future release, I can't see why they wouldn't be able to do that would be great. And lastly, oh look, a cool little cover on the top. Um, the PTFE tubing, uh, uh, there's some B-roll here of it, hoo-hoo. Um, it takes a real sharp angle, which sometimes when loading the filament in, you really have to push through, and I don't love that. Um, so what I did is I kind of freed it from the cable chain to kind of release tension of the PTFE tubing, because uh, I just don't want the filament snapping, especially more brittle filaments, um, like the harder filaments and or transparent or translucent filaments. They, poo, I have this yellow translucent right now from Amazon that if it just smells more moisture, it gets brittle. I know it would absolutely shatter in this tube. I haven't even tried to use it on this printer. But for a company's first true Core XY, for this type of machine at this price point, I'm gonna be honest, guys, I was expecting a lot more problems. I was expecting setup issues. I was expecting something to break, give out. This just feel weird. You can tell corners were cut, but like, they didn't. Now, like I said, I didn't get as much hours on the printer as I would have liked. I wanted to get this thing, unbox it, and run it into the ground, and have this break, and that break, and this break, and this catch on fire, and that blow up, and none of that happened. Even the other YouTubers who I've been texting who got this printer early, we've all been very surprised in our group chats or our texts about like, oh, uh, yours is still running? Mine too. And me and Uncle Jesse landed on a lot of the similar problems, the PTFE tubing. We were joking about how bad the light sucks. Like, we, it's just the little things. I don't feel like Elugu threw this together and just sent it out to us to test and find the bugs and report back to them. These are little nitpicks. Like, yeah, they're gonna focus more on some things, but until it gets in the hands of people like us and we really start testing it, then we're gonna find the little things that be like, yeah, okay, the tube's a little janky and the light kind of sucks. Oh well, big deal. This thing was announced in like June or July of last year, so it's taken a while to get to us. And I got to see one of the original test models at um, Rapid TCT, and this looks so much better. So this is Elegoo slicing software. I'm leaning over my desk really weird right now. You guys are gonna have to deal with it. Um, it's, it's literally just a rip of Orca Slicer. And again, I am not mad about it. I like Orca Slicer. And it looks like they've gone and imported a lot of their materials, their generic profiles. Um, I did throw, I've only thrown PLA at this, you know, some silk, some normals. I think I have some matte PLA and it's all been printing just fine. The profiles they have are great. I'm sure you could dial them up a little bit more, but for just getting started, everything you need is right here. All the settings you can put, you can take off advanced mode, really shorten it down. I like advanced mode because I change things. You obviously have the same previews. You have the, the carbon, you can import all the printers and then you can connect remotely to the device and you can actually go and turn on all of the fans and max speed them. I really hope you you guys can hear that it's like a it's like a tornado
You can see in there the light, it's ample enough for the time lapse and the camera to provide whatever you need. Um, and obviously I've been playing some time lapse videos throughout this video, so you can see it. But all the simple functionality, you can go and select your files, you can start the print, you can export, blah, blah, blah. Right here is the video list. Like I said, I, I don't know what this means. I could probably drop this into Google Translate, which gives me absolutely no information. So I do know, not know what that means. Someone in the comments maybe can uh, clue me in. But I can imagine there will be an option to export here, which, which would be really cool. And I did notice that there is a reading on the temperature, uh, on the chamber temperature. Now this could just be for monitoring and make sure you, you know, if, you're, if your door's open, you're closed, the ambient temperature for the PLAs. But I am curious if there's gonna be an upgraded version eventually that does offer chamber heating because theoretically that shouldn't be that hard, right? You can see me in the reflection in the camera. Look at it, look at it, <laughs> hi mom. But between the unboxing, the setup, the calibration, it actually calibrates in about 30 minutes. Um, I'd say um, unboxing to actually first print, 45 to an hour, and that's it running all of its tests, it's self-leveling, all of that. That's not bad, there's not much you're gonna have to do at all and it doesn't auto level before every single print. Though the auto leveling sequence does take a while when you run it, you don't need to run it before every single print. So that 10 minute benchy doesn't actually turn into a 40 minute benchy because it had to level itself for half an hour. Hopefully they can pull that timing back a little bit with some firmware updates, but it's, it's a good thing it just doesn't run it all the time. And as I already pointed out, it has a poop shoot and that might not just be filament purges. I don't know if they're doing any type of multicolor system like an AMS or an ACE or CFS, whatever all the companies are doing. I can't imagine it would be hard. Everybody's starting to do it. So adding some type of upgrade. Um, I don't think it has any auxiliary expansion ports on the back. It does not, but maybe, I don't know. It'd be cool if it had a multicolor system. It has the poop shoot, it has a filament cutter. Who knows? So now let's talk about the prints. This cube came out great. I didn't use supports on it. So it actually got to test the overhangs and it did filament pause. Now it did have some separation um, between where it shifted and I'm not quite sure why. I think it was a differential in the filament and I also left it sitting for like three days. I was, on a, I was out on a trip, I, was, I wasn't home. So it did just sit there for a while until I was able to do the swap. But this is the size and the top layer came out really, really good. It's a really low infill, I think one to 3% infill. You can see the infill through it and it's only like two roofs, but like the sides came out really smooth. I'm actually kind of sad I didn't have, see my camera can't even focus on it the right way. Um, I am sad I didn't have quite enough filament for this. Yeah, that's a little bit better. You can see how smooth that came out. Like the camera was really having trouble focusing on that. Not bad. Then I went and printed all the stock files. This Benji came out pretty good. This filament I had had sitting out for a while, so it got a little stringy. It didn't do that on any of the other prints, but this is the little stock Benji, and it came out pretty nice. Next up is the cute little Buddha. This thing came out perfect. It's, it's, it's adorable. Don't ask me why, but I printed four of these Eiffel Towers, and they all came out really, really good. Like, the detail and quality on this, rather impressive. Printed some vases or vases if you're dirty, and these came out fantastic. I love this color changing filament. I think it's from Cookie Cad. I could not tell you. I've had it for quite a while. Um, yeah, these came out really neat. I printed this scraper bed thing. A couple of flexies because of course I did. I print, I always print these. I love these little guys. The top layering on the white came out great and it was just a flawless print in place. No notes. And the same for the sparkly Rexy. Like I got, I got, I got nothing for that. Looks good. Now, all of these, all the prints I sliced are all on standard quality, the standard profiles. Obviously, the stock prints that come with the printer are all sliced by Elegoo. They're gonna be a little bit different in terms of like the settings and what they did to get the optimal speed. Everybody always maxes out their Benchy so it prints as good and fast as possible to make you say, wow. But all the things I'm printing, standard quality. I'm just adjusting infill. Because this thing at anything more than one or 3% would have been ridiculous. And then I printed. And then I printed this. I got this really fun print in place sword because I wanted to test the tolerances of the printer. And um, why print one when you can print four? Something about this purple PLA that I printed with, um, the thermal expansion caught up with it. I'm not quite sure why this one printed weird. Literally the exact same file I printed four times, but this one just had a little bit of, looks like a little bit of warping and bowing. You can see the edges right here got a little flared. So I don't know if this PLA was just shrinking while I was printing, but this one, ah, this one was not it. Probably a profile error. And this one's just cool. 
Yeah. You too, huh? Oh, this one did it too. I haven't extended this one, actually, now that, I'm, now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, it did the same thing. Kind of hard to see, but it flares up a little bit right there. So I'm wondering if that is just, I honestly have no idea what that's from. Hmm. The yellow one worked fine. Also, I leave my filaments out completely in open air and humidity. Maybe it's that. But I know for a fact that this one right here <sighs> came out the absolute best. This one, this, this one's my favorite. This one extends fully and it just looks great. New verse the guy she tells you not to worry about. And last but not least, I printed a devil fruit, a gum gum fruit uh, for my Etsy shop. This stem was not printed on this. That is from a different printer. But compared to the ones I've been printing out for my Etsy on other printers, I really notice no difference. It handled the silk PLA. It's actually still loaded right here up on it. Um, it handled this just fine and I love how this came out. And the only print failure I had through all of these was a second cube. Why did I send a second cube? I don't know. Um, I went and did a third filament change on it and uh, the, the, the extruder clogged. Well, it didn't clog, but I didn't have the filament all the way through and I didn't pay enough attention to make sure it was purging when I did the filament swap. And then I just hit resume print and it kept printing. And since it has no AI functionality, it didn't see that nothing was printing. The extruder was trying to pull the filament, but there was no filament to pull. And I'm pretty sure it's because it got caught on that bend that I was talking about in the PTFE tube. So I thought I, I, when I pushed it all the way up, I thought it was all the way there. And I'm like, oh, that's definitely in the extruder. Hit extrude and I left. I didn't monitor it to see if it actually pooped or purged any filament. This was my fault, but this was the only failure. After the auto leveling, it was a fire and forget machine. I was able to just send files, leave, and come back to a finished print. Not bad. That infill looks so pretty. Look at it. Look at it. Okay, so final thoughts and notes. Would I recommend this machine? Yes or no? Yes, absolutely. So far, there is nothing that would stop me from recommending this printer to somebody. It's supposedly cheap, under 500. It has every feature I want, and it's not loaded with a bunch of unnecessary things that I don't. It has a touchscreen, it prints, it's easily, it's already assembled out of box, it has a camera, I can do time lapses, I can remote monitor it from my computer, and I haven't had any issues with it yet. Now, like I said in the beginning of the video, I have not really fully put it to its absolute best test. I haven't maxed out a high quality print. I haven't let it print for 70 hours straight to see doing multiple filament swaps and just seeing how that's going to come out. But it's here, it's working and it is a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I was very worried when Elegoo had announced this and showed this at Rapid like, all right, let's see how your clone is. But honestly, I'm very impressed by it. I would absolutely implore you to watch other review videos. I know other people have gotten more hours out of it and I haven't been able to go through YouTube and watch everybody else's yet because I didn't want to do that before filming mine because I don't want to be biased about anything. This is my experience. I will be doing a follow-up video on this printer once I get more hours into it and I can really start using it and kind of abusing it more. I'm going to be using it for projects. I see no reason not to. It's putting out the same quality as some of my other much more expensive printers. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that video because I'm very excited to keep using this thing. Um, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about anything you saw in the video, please leave a comment down below and I will stay up to date and give you feedback as this printer continues to print. Um, if you want more live information about the printer and printers that I'm reviewing and using, make sure you follow me on Instagram. My Instagram stories are always flooded with the quick little nuances through the day, going into my workshop in the morning and then there's a print failure that doesn't always make it onto YouTube or something. So it's a much easier way to stay up to date on just all the machines I'm testing, not just this thing. So yeah, go check me out over there. Oh, and a Patreon plug, because I never plug that. Hey guys, I have a Patreon and there's a lot of crazy stuff happening over there about my move and a lot of other stuff going on. So if you're interested, go check that out. It's down below. It supports the channel. Thanks, Kate. Bye. Okay, not actually bye, because I want to say a proper goodbye. Uh, thank you, Elegoo, for sending me this machine and sponsoring the video. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. You have a good day.